In task one, I've been given a spreadsheet which contains the daily sales for Monday to Friday for each of our stores, and I need to calculate the total sales for each city for that week. I also need to format all the values into the U.S. dollar. And finally, at the end here, I need to calculate total overall sales. Okay, I'm going to start off by formatting the values. I'm going to highlight all the values. I will click on the Format Cells dialog box and select Currency. I will scroll down here looking for the US dollar and click OK. That's the formatting done. Now I need to get the total sales for Abilene. I will create a formula, so I'm going to type equals C4 plus D4 plus E4 plus F4 plus G4. And hit enter, and that gives me the total for that city. Oh, I think I have a quicker way. I'll use the sum function, equals sum, bracket. I am going to highlight the values from Monday to Friday and hit the Enter key. Then I am going to continue on, and soon I'll get this job done. Okay, now I have them all done. And now I just need to get the total sales here. So I go equal sum, bracket, and I highlight all the values all the way up there. Hit the OK key. There, that's the job done. Great. OK, I need to calculate each store's weekly totals and the overall total and format values into the US dollar. I will highlight the values by selecting the first row of values and then use the keyboard combination Control shift down I will then click Auto Sum. I will format to the US dollar by clicking here. I want to get down to the end of this contiguous column of data, so I press Control, downward arrow, which will bring me to the end. Then I will click on Auto Sum, and I have my overall totals. Job done. In task two, I am using the same spreadsheet. I have the sales from Monday to Friday for each of our stores, and I have the totals in here. Now each store gets 2% of the revenue as a bonus, and here on the bonus rate sheet in this cell, I can see the 2% bonus rate. Okay, what I'll do, I'll create a formula, so I will type equal. I am going to grab this value here, and I'm going to multiply it by 2% and hit the Enter key, and that's Abilene Store Commission done. Now I'll do the next one for the Akron Store, which is this here. Multiplied it by 2%. Great. I'll keep going. Soon I have them all done. Okay, so I need to work out the bonus amount for each store. The staff get to keep a percentage of the revenue as a bonus. The percentage is here in the bonus rate worksheet. Now I realize that this bonus rate could change, so I'm going to use the cell reference, not the actual amount. I type equal the total sales for Abilene multiplied by. I am going to grab the cell reference, which is the bonus rates worksheet, and it's this cell here, so it's cell C3 of the bonus rate worksheet. Now I'm going to be copying down this formula, and if I copy it down, C3 will become plus 1, C4, then C5, etc. But I want all the stores in my worksheet to be accessing this cell here, so I'm going to make this cell reference an absolute reference. Hit the F4 function key. That's a full absolute reference. That would do, but to be more precise, because I'm copying it down, I only really need to lock the row part of it, which is fine. Then I'm going to double click on the fill handle, and that's the job done. In task three, I've been given this spreadsheet, and it's a list of the sales made by our salespeople. Every salesperson is to get a $2 bonus for every sale they have made. 
So I will need to count how many sales each salesperson made and then multiply the total by two. I need, for example, to count how many sales Mike made, like one, two, three, and all the way down. It's quite a substantial list of over 900 items. Okay, so one way I think I could do this, maybe if I sorted the records here, so I've got all the bills here. I am going to type bill over here, and I need to count how many times bill, well, if I highlight bill, all the bills here. Oh, I got a few. All right, and it's telling me there's 119. I could go up here to the cell opposite bill and type in equal 119 multiplied by 2. Bill is going to get a bonus of 238, $2 for every sale he made. Right, so I keep going and I will soon get this job done. Okay, so each salesperson gets $2 for every sale they made. So I need to find out how many sales each salesperson made. First, I need to get a unique list of all the salespeople's names. For that, I will create a quick pivot table. Insert pivot table and up comes my pivot table outline on a new worksheet. I will tick the box beside salesperson, putting it into the role label box. And now I have a unique list of all the names of each salesperson. I will copy that and go back to my spreadsheet, and I am going to paste in those names here. Now I need to find out how many sales Bill made. I am going to use the COUNTIF function for that. So here I type COUNTIF bracket, and it needs all the names for its first argument. So I click in cell 8, control shift down, comma, and I want it to count every instance of Bill, which is in cell reference G7. That will tell me how many sales Bill made, 119. Now I want to multiply that by the bonus amount in C2. Before I hit enter, I know I'm going to be copying this formula down, and as I want all the count of functions to be able to access the full list of names, I need to make C8 and C905 absolute references. I need to lock the complete range. Now G7. Do I want G7 to become G8? I do because I want the next COUNTIF function to be counting the number of times Chris appears, so I leave that as it is. Do I want to make cell reference C2 absolute? Yes. If I don't, it will become C3, C4, C5, which are blank cells, so that must also become an absolute reference. Enter. Now I can simply double-click to copy the formulas down, and the job is complete, and it would have taken me the same amount of time if I had 2,000 or more salespersons, and not just 16. In this task, Task 4, I have a list of our products, the description of each product, its price, and its current stock position. Over here, I want to create an order form. Basically, if I put in a product code here, I want to have its description here, its price here, the quantity the customer wants here, and I want to be able to work out the total cost to the customer. Finally, I need to check the stock availability for that order. Okay, so if the customer, we'll say, wanted this product here, I will just copy this product code here and paste it under the SKU heading. I will add the description of that particular product. I am going to go to my product list, find the description and copy it and paste it in here. Now for the price. The price of that product is here in cell D5. So I'm going to say the price is equal to cell D5. That looks good because if the price changes, then it updates there. Let's say the customer wants to buy 50 of them. In cell K6, I will create a formula to work out the total cost, so I will type equal in the cell with the price here and multiply it by the quantity here in J6. Now the stock. I'm going to just check the existing stock for this product in my list, and we have 23 in stock. He wants 50, so I'm just going to type insufficient stock. Right, that looks okay.
Okay, so I have my product list, all our product codes, descriptions, the prices and stock situations, and we want to create an order form over here, which will work out the prices and check the stock, etc. We're going to be inputting a product code here. I'll just put that in there as a sample. Now we want to get its description. I know that this list is constantly changing. We're constantly adding new products, deleting products, we're sorting, etc. But I need to be able to get the description of this product code no matter where it is on the list. So I am going to use a VLOOKUP function to do that. VLOOKUP, look up the product code in this cell reference here, comma, in our list. So I am going to highlight the first row, control shift down bracket. I want to bring back the description, which is the second field, and I want an exact match and bracket. Now I want to get the price in here. Again, I know this list could be changing all the time, so I can't assume that the price is always going to be in cell D5. So we're going to create another VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP the product code here in cell G6, comma, highlight the first row, and using the keyboard combination keys, control shift down, comma, I want to bring back the price which is the third field of that record, comma, and I want an exact match bracket. Okay, now I'm dynamically finding the correct price and the correct description, no matter what happens to my product list. For quantity, let's type in 20. The total cost is going to be equal to the quantity multiplied by the price. Finally, we want to check if there is enough stock available. I will use an if function for this. If this value here in cell J6 is greater than the stock for this product, there will be an insufficient stock. Now again, I need to be able to dynamically find the stock of that particular product code no matter where it is in the list, so I will use a VLOOKUP function. Equal VLOOKUP bracket, the product code here in G6, comma, highlight the first row of our list, control shift down to highlight the whole list, comma, and we're trying to bring back the stock field, so one, two, three, the fourth field of the record, and close it off with brackets, comma. Now we're back to the if function, value of true. If it's true, what do you want to happen? Well, if the quantity required is greater than the quantity here, we're going to have it say insufficient stock. Remember, when you have text inside a function, it must be enclosed in inverted commas. Otherwise, Excel will think it's the name of a named range, and you'll get the hashtag name error coming up. So I type inverted commas, insufficient stock, inverted commas. Comma. If it's false, what do we want to happen? We are going to say in stock. So inverted commas, I will type in stock, inverted commas, close our brackets. Notice the bracket is a dark, then lighter dark color. This means there's enough brackets there to balance up. As we can see, it's telling us there is sufficient stock available for that particular order. Great, job done. If we add, delete, or sort our list, the order form will still work perfectly. In this final task, I have been given a spreadsheet with a long list of all our orders. It has the region, the product sold, the date it was sold, the customer, the quantity sold, the revenue, the cost of goods, and the profit. I've been told to create a report showing the total revenue, total quantity, and the profit per customer. I think I will sort by customer. And then over here, I'm going to copy and paste the first customer's name. I need to make the column a little bigger. I need to get the revenue, so I will type revenue here. I will type equal sum bracket, and I highlight all the revenues for that particular customer and close bracket. I have the revenues for that customer, and now I need the quantity sold. I will type quantity here. I type equal sum bracket and highlight the quantity sold for that specific customer here and close brackets.
For profits, we'll type profits here. Now again, I am going to type equal sum bracket, and I'm going to highlight the profits for that particular customer and close brackets, and that's the first one done. Now I am going to get the next customer's name. Copy it, paste it here, and off I go again. I will soon have this job licked. Okay, so I have a list of all our orders and it's quite a long list. I need to create a report showing the revenue, profit, and quantity sold for each customer. I will use a pivot table. Click the insert ribbon, pivot table, hit OK, and I have a new worksheet with my pivot table outline. I'm going to tick the customer box here. Then I'm going to tick the revenue, quantity, and profit boxes. And now I have a report showing me the revenue, quantity, and the profits for each of our customers. And with that, the job is done in less than 30 seconds.